Why, hello. I didn't know you'd be there. I'm Dave Rubin. This is the Rubin Report Direct Message, and today is July 28th in the year 2021. In just a mere three days, I will be disappearing for a month. Will the world be here when I get back? We'll find out, or we won't. I don't know. Uh, guys, as always, do me a favor. Subscribe to our videos, tap the notification bell, share them, all that good stuff. And yes, we will have content coming out throughout August. Actually, we've got a couple interviews that I've been doing this week, uh, next week, once I'm off the grid. They're all gonna be devoted to calming down, not being crazy, not letting politics get to you, how you can be healthier, both physically and mentally, how you cannot be so obsessed with all the stuff online. We had discussed not doing anything for August, but that could really crush us in the YouTube algorithm and really wreck the future of the channel online, which obviously we didn't want to do that. That's, by the way, part of why I go off the grid, because these algorithms keep us constantly obsessed with everything and clicking and blah, blah, blah. So we are going to only do one interview a week, and we've got some great interviews. Uh, the first one next week will be with Eckhart Tolle, all about just surviving this digital madness. We just taped it. It's, I mean, talking to that guy is really just like as good as it gets for an interviewer and just someone that wants to find some, some peace on this earth. Uh, and then we've got some fitness stuff and some other health stuff. And I think you're going you're gonna to dig it throughout the month. But the point is we're not going to keep you there just mashing buttons and clicking like and all of that stuff. Uh, guys, we've got three stories for you today. The big January 6th. Insurrection Commission uh, took place yesterday. There was testimony, there was crying, uh, there were people wearing diapers. It was all very, very theatric. Uh, so we're gonna show you some of that. Just ridiculous. I mean, these Democrats crying, it's just so pathetic. We will also juxtapose, you guys know I like the word juxtapose. We will juxtapose uh, some of the images because we've all seen the images of January 6th. And look, some people got in there, Somebody took a picture at Pelosi's desk. Uh, one person did get killed. It happened to be one of the people who went in. It was not a law enforcement officer. It was actually a, a woman, who uh, Ashley Babbitt, who uh, was a military member. Uh, she was the only person killed that day. Nobody brought guns, but you know they've got their meme out. Their meme is that this was the Trump-led insurrection. Uh, AOC said that we were only an hour away from martial law. She also thought she was gonna get raped that day. I mean, these people are just absolute clowns. So we're gonna show you some of the stuff from the commission yesterday, it's just bananas. And then, speaking of bananas, this Fauci guy, the infallible Fauci, he has flip-flopped so many times and I saw a two-minute video yesterday on the Twitter that is just the most spectacular destruction of everything that Anthony Fauci has done for the last year and a half. And not only that, then we're gonna show you some video of uh, Joe Biden talking about vaccines and that you won't have to wear masks anymore and they're now they're reversing on that. I mean, they're just reversing on absolutely everything because as they're telling us, the science is always evolving. So it's almost like you shouldn't buy into everything they say the second they say it because we get new information. And now there's a study out of Sweden showing that the vaccines are not nearly as effective as, uh, as we thought. So I'll just present some information to you and we uh, source it so you can you know, figure out something for yourself. And then finally, the border crisis down south. We haven't done too much on the border here because uh, I'm usually you know, dealing with all this other nonsense, uh, but it's bananas. They're, they've got tons of people just basically walking through the border. Half of them don't have masks on if we're to believe that we're in this crazy pandemic. They're, they're not, <laughs> I assure you, they're not social distancing and uh, we're just letting them in. It's very odd, why do we do that down there? But if we don't have just like an open border with Canada, even though I know a lot of Canadians and shout out to you Canadians who watch this show, I know there are many freedom loving Canadians, especially in Western Canada, but I know that freedom is spreading throughout Canada right now. Uh, we don't have just like an open door policy. We don't just let Canadians walk in. So why do we keep letting all these people walk in our Southern border when often they're not even from Mexico. They're from other countries. A lot of them are from Haiti. They're from all over the place. And we just kind of let them in and then we spread them throughout the country. And we're supposed to be in the middle of a pandemic. I'm starting to think something's rotten in Stinktown. You see what I'm saying, people? Uh, guys, before I get to any of that, I want to talk to you about Black Rifle Coffee. I'm drinking it right now. You know, Black Rifle Coffee is a veteran-owned coffee company serving premium coffee 
to people who love America. Veteran CEO and founder Evan Hafer spent over seven years on the ground overseas with U.S. Special Forces and as a CIA contractor. Black Rifle Coffee Company is continually committed to supporting veteran law enforcement and first responder causes. This summer, they'll invite you to enjoy your coffee. By that, they don't mean just the great taste of America's coffee, but the more places you drink it, the passion and adventure it fuels and inspires and the entertainment they serve along the way. Whether you're brewing the perfect cup of pour over before, kicking ass at work, or cracking a can of 300 on your next backcountry mission, Black Rifle Coffee Company is here to fuel your way wherever the summer takes you. They import their high quality coffee beans from all over the world and roast five days a week at their facilities in Manchester, Tennessee and Salt Lake City, Utah. The team at Black Rifle Coffee is continually researching and experimenting with their new roasting methods and coffee origins. Watch this, I'm gonna take a sip right now. It's delicious. Purchase at blackriflecoffee.com slash Ruben and use code Ruben at checkout for 20% off your first purchase and your first coffee club order. Fuel your summer with America's coffee, Black Rifle Coffee. And now back to me. Okay, so let me just broadly say something about the January 6th insurrection that we're being told about. Okay, a lot of people showed up at the Capitol. Uh, some of them were violent. And if you broke the law, if you broke windows, if you attacked police officers, if you damaged property, et cetera, et cetera. I believe in laws. I believe that we are a country that needs the rule of law. If you don't have the rule of law, you really don't have anything. I know that sounds very Trumpian, right? If you don't have a border, you don't have a country. I believe in the rule of law. I know that sounds really crazy, you know, authoritarian right wing stuff. Um, but if the, anyone broke the law that day, you have to be dealt with. You have to be dealt with fairly. I mean, and now it seems like we've got people that have been held uh, without trial for months and in solitary confinement and a whole bunch of other stuff. But my preface to all of this is if you broke the law that day, you know, just as I would say in anything else, I would even go as far to say if you were, say, in San Francisco and you stole a whole bunch of stuff uh, from a Walgreens that uh, you should be criminally uh, prosecuted, okay? You know, I'm a guy of the law, what can I tell you? Um, a lot of people did not break the law that day. A lot of people actually just went to peacefully protest. They went to have their voices heard. They were not happy about the election. That is your God-given right as an American, regardless of whatever you think the truth related to the election may be, okay? You're allowed to protest. Uh, the fact that they took their protests to the seat of power, to the Capitol in DC, as opposed to say, burning down random cities, attacking federal courthouses, you know, uh, assaulting people on the street, you know, hunting down people they disagree with, you know, things that the Black Lives Matter people do and that the Antifa people do, over $2 billion worth of damage in the last two years or so. Uh, the fact that they took it to the seat of power is pretty good. By the way, there are plenty of videos and you've all probably seen them because you are online creatures, not blue-pilled mainstream zombies, where they're talking to law enforcement there and law enforcement people are saying, yes, you can go in, just stay peaceful, you know, stay within the lines, don't go into these offices. You can see videos where they move barricades out of the way. And then yes, it did get out of control. So, okay, I think I've given you my fair estimation of what happened that day. The bigger issue than what actually happened that day in those few hours where AOC was you know, off site and claimed she thought she was gonna get killed and raped. She wasn't even there. Um, the bigger issue is the way that the media and the Democrats have used January 6th to basically stifle dissent, make sure that every Republican or Trump supporter or conservative is on some kind of list and feels that they could get kicked off Twitter and YouTube and everywhere else uh, if they just tweet something that goes against the narrative. That's really the issue. Uh, because everyone knows that there is nobody and, and I want you to think about this in your own life. Is there anyone beyond the sort of media elite, so like the CNN types, and then the Democrat elite, the politicians, that's really talking about January 6th, that really is like, yes, this thing was an insurrection. There were no plans to take over the government, right? You know, we're an hour away from martial law. It's like, no, that is complete fabrication like everything else you do. Uh, these were people that were at, at, at the very least a little overzealous. Some of them did obviously commit crimes. Anyway, the Democrats and the media are using this as just this constant cudgel to paint everyone that disagrees with them as a violent extremist, making sure it seems like everyone that was there was a white supremacist, which is exactly what they did at all the Trump rallies and everything else. So they're having the hearing, okay? They're having the hearing, much like we had two sham impeachments. They're having their little, you know, their little dog and pony show. And half the Democrats are just crying while they're up there because they're so rattled by this thing that basically took place for a couple hours, uh, you know, basically six months ago. Here's 
Adam Schiff. Because if we're no longer committed to a peaceful transfer of power after our elections, uh, if our side doesn't win, then God help us. We deem elections illegitimate merely because they didn't go our way rather than trying to do better the next time. God help us. And if we're so driven by bigotry and hate that we attack our fellow citizens as traitors, if they're born in another country or they don't look like us, and God help us. But I have faith because of folks like you. Could I, oh, thank you. Oh, the people who don't look like us and other things happened and it was two hours and I made up a fake impeachment and I did it twice and I'm a really horrible <laughs> Here's Adam Kinzinger. I never expected a day to be <clears throat> quite as emotional for me as it has been. Uh, I've talked to a number of you and gotten to know you. I think it's important to tell you right now, though. You guys may, like, individually feel a little broken. You guys all talk about the effects you have to deal with, and, you know, you talk about the impact of that day. But you guys won. You guys held you know, democracies are not defined by our bad days. We're defined by how we come back from bad days, how we take accountability for that. And for all the overheated rhetoric surrounding this committee, our mission is very simple. Let's define the truth, and it's to ensure accountability. <laughs> Could I? Th thank you. It's just because we've had a bad day, and could I? Oh, thank you. And we're just we're trying. <laughs> okay, these people are complete ridiculous actors. They are theater actors and not very good ones. You know what we did? We went back all the way to May of 2020. Do you remember May of 2020? Uh, because here's what happened outside the White House. These are Antifa and BLM protesters outside the White House. Insurrection, you decide. That's the one we don't cry for, right? No crying, that's all right, that's all right, no crying. Yeah, those are BLM people, those are Antifa people. We've got some stills, right? Don't we have some stills of some of the signs that they had up there? The people want blood. Uh, pretty sure they meant police blood, maybe Trump's blood. Uh, as you can see, these are not very happy people. These are angry people. Insurrectionists, revolutionaries, people that we should arrest, people that we should have a sham hearing about. Hmm, strange. By the way, according to The Guardian, 25 people were killed in the BLM George Floyd protests of 2020. Uh, you remember, you may remember, you probably don't actually, Officer David Dorn, who was one of the people killed, black police officer who was killed in the line of duty, somehow no rallies for him in the midst of that. 25 people killed in the rallies, the BLM Antifa rallies related to George Floyd. As I said before, one person was killed on January 6th and it happened to be uh, this woman, Ashley Babbitt, who was a former member of the military, and she was shot dead by Capitol Police. This is all theater. This is all theater, and it is designed to then get places like the ADL and these other activist organizations to then work with the administration, okay, to make sure that they can ban and silence and censor everyone who is dissenting on the big tech platforms. Uh, that is one of the reasons that I started Locals. It's one of the reasons I've got some announcements starting on 
on Friday when I get off the grid, we're, we're gonna fix this stuff uh, because these people, they're out for everybody. They're out for everybody. And sorry, Kinzinger, you pet Republican. He's a, Kinzinger's a Republican, by the way. He's a pet Republican, that's what I call him. The guys that go on MSNBC so they can be told they're, they're nice people. There's a Mitt Romney, a Liz Cheney, you're a pet and we pet you on the head and oh, sit, sit, sit. Oh, you want a treat? Arf, arf, arf. Uh, that's what they are. I don't like them. And I don't like Schiff. And Schiff is just the worst. You know, he's a congressman here in California. He's helped wreck this state. Um, he's just a complete ineffectual bleh. I was trying to be nice. I, was, I, I decided not to curse. Wasn't that nice? I was trying to be nice. Um, they're, just, they're just terrible people. And they're liars and they're actors. And just know that and then go ahead with your life and everything will be okay. Uh, but speaking of liars and actors, we got to talk about Fauci. Because now Fauci is coming out and he's kind of into this idea that the CDC, and remember, the Center for Disease Control, it doesn't set law, it can give recommendations, but people seem to think if the CDC says something, you have to do it. Uh, the CDC, you know, they give the basic ideas. Guys, this is what we're seeing, this is what we think you should do, this is sort of a mandate, but you don't have to do it, it's not a law, as far as I know. I'm just a, I'm a, just a simple guy. Um, but the CDC is sort of into this idea now that if you've been vaccinated, you probably should still wear a mask. We've got the videotape. Dr. Fauci, the, the CDC is saying that this is based on new science, new data, uh, showing that even those who are vaccinated can carry the virus with them, they can be contagious. This seems to contradict what we've been told, that once you get vaccinated, you're protected. Well, in, in some respects, yes, but what's changed, Judy, is the virus has changed. So when you have vaccinated people who might have a breakthrough infection, and we know now as a fact, as a scientific fact, that they can transmit the virus to an uninfected person, it's for that reason that the CDC made the change in recommendation and did just as you correctly stated, namely that if you are vaccinated, if you are in an indoor setting, you should still wear a mask. I hear you saying it is based on science, but to many Americans who are by now pandemic weary, um, do you understand why they may be looking at this? And we're hearing this from some, uh, from a number of Americans saying, well, why did, why did the CDC uh, change the guidelines two months ago? Were, were they, did they jump the gun when they did that? Or they're asking, you know, why weren't they more transparent? in the beginning. People are asking these kinds of questions. Those are reasonable questions, Judy, but I think what we all need to realizing, we are dealing with an evasive type of a virus. It, it evolves, so that people need to understand. It, it, it's, a, it's a painful realization, but it's true. Yeah, the painful realization here, Anthony, is that this thing does evolve, and you guys have flip-flopped every which way and done roughly four trillion things that have not helped. Uh, two interesting pieces before we show you this incredible video of Fauci's flip-flops. Um, when everybody was pushing the vaccine a couple months back, were they saying, was there any hint that, oh, guys, you're gonna get the vaccine, and by the way, you'll probably still get COVID, you'll still be able to get COVID, you'll still be able to transmit COVID, you're probably gonna have to get booster shots, and by the way, the whole thing keeps, uh, mutating and changing and everything else. So we'll see what happens in six months. That's not really the way they did the sale, did they? Actually, the way they did the sale, you know, I'm gonna switch something here. We're gonna do the Biden video next, all right? The way they did the sale was basically get the vaccine and you are good to go, okay? And uh, guess what? We got video on that too. Here's Joe Biden on what happens when you get the vaccine. If you are fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. Really, Joe? Because that's not what the CDC is saying now. That's not what Fauci is saying now. So when you said that, you know, basically two months ago, month and a half ago, why didn't you say, oh, well, unless the science changes and morphs, which, by the way, Fauci is saying science constantly changes and morphs and we get new information, which, of course, that actually is true. I mean, it's actually quite extraordinary. So now we're going to show you a two minute video. This went bananas viral on uh, Twitter yesterday. These are just incredible back and forth compilations of Fauci flip-flopping. Take a look. People should not be walking around with masks. Let me just state for the record that masks are not theater. Wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better. And masks are protective 
And we, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. Mark, there has you know? not been any indication that putting a mask on and wearing a mask for a considerable period of time has any deleterious effects. There are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. And can you get some schmutz sort of staying inside there? Of course. You do not need to wear a mask indoors if, in fact, you've been vaccinated. Good that you're vaccinated, but in a situation where you have people indoors, particularly crowded, you should wear a mask. So even if you are vaccinated, you should wear a mask. If, in fact, you are vaccinated, fully vaccinated, you are protected, and you do not need to wear a mask outdoors or indoors. When the children go out into the community, you want them to continue to wear masks. You know, if you look at, at, at children outside, particularly when they're with the family, uh, walking down the street, playing a game or what have you, don't have to wear a mask. The, 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 the pediatric, the Academy of Pediatric, actually makes that recommendation that children should be wearing masks uh, from two years old onward. And you're asking now if your child is a member of your household, can you walk outdoors with your child without a mask? According to that chart, the answer is yes. But the child can't, not to beat it, yeah. beat it to death. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Because now okay. the CDC says, I mean, I think I've got this right. One mask is better than zero masks. Two masks is better than one mask. But you don't have to have double masks. Is, is that right? I mean, <laughs> you know, it became clear that cloth coverings that you didn't have to buy in a store that you could make yourself were adequate. And then you want it to fit better. So one of the ways you could do it, if you would like to, is put a cloth mask over, which actually here and here and here, where you could get leakage in, is much better contained. Are you a double masker, Dr. Fauci? Look <laughs> like you are. We should have played the Looney Tunes theme song in the background of that thing. I mean, tell me that is not absolutely incredible. And are you gonna tell me also that, oh, the science was changing the whole time in that last year and a half while he was doing that. That, you know, when you touch your face more because of the mask, that actually causes a problem. Is that not a problem anymore now that they want masks on us again? You, and he also says mask might make you feel better, right? Because they don't do anything. Now mask again, even though you're vaccinated. Anthony Fauci, if you're watching, this show. I am but a humble YouTuber, but I have a recommendation for you. Retire. Go away. Just disappear. Nobody's going to come looking for you. We don't care where you go. Go down to Florida where they've got DeSantis not masking people because I have no doubt that Fauci is not masking himself privately in, at his dinners. Uh, Fauci, by the way, as you probably know, is the highest paid person in the entire federal government. He makes over $400,000 a year. I have no doubt that he's also making all sorts of money from investments related to all vaccines. Like there's just no doubt that all of that stuff is part of this. Um, I don't know how you can trust that guy. How can you trust that guy? How, how can you be someone who has some semblance of a functioning brain and at this point trust what that guy says? or trust when Joe Biden says, uh, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. Now you do have to wear a mask. So did Joe Biden or his handlers, did nobody have an inkling that perhaps the virus was gonna mutate, that perhaps there was gonna be a variant and everything else? And now there's some really extraordinary stuff. So a Swiss policy research group uh, has analyzed some data coming out of Israel, and this is really, really incredible stuff. So let's, let's listen to this, it's three bullet points. It's really extraordinary, actually. The latest data from Israel, which has primarily used the Pfizer mRNA vaccine, indicates that vaccine effectiveness against Delta coronavirus infection and symptomatic disease has dropped from about 95% to 40%, whereas effectiveness against hospitalization and severe disease, for example, low blood oxygen levels, remains at 80 to 90%, see chart above. Come back to me for one second. So in essence, what they're saying there is, uh, if you're gonna get the milder version of the Delta variant, that it could help a little bit. But that's not the way any of this was sold. Was any of this sold that if you get vaccinated, that you'll just get a milder thing? I know that's the meme out now, that you're just gonna get a milder version, that's still while you should do it. But it's gonna be, you know, they told us originally 95% effective. Now they're telling us that in that case, it's actually only 40% effective. All right, it continues. The Israeli data shown above indicates that effectiveness against infection and mild symptoms decreases rapidly over time and reaches near zero levels at about half a year. So if you have 
the vaccine after about a half a year, it's completely worthless. Most likely this is because COVID vaccines do not achieve mucosal immunity in contrast to natural infection and serum antibody levels, i.e. antibodies in the blood decrease within months, see chart below. So what they're saying there is you would have a better situation for yourself if you actually got COVID, which many, many people did, and then you had natural immunities. That would be better than the vaccine, okay? And then finally, and there's some interesting stuff here. Thus, the false premise of a very high protection against symptomatic infection found during the official vaccine trials was simply based on very high short-term serum antibody levels mimicking mucosal immunity. Conceivably, the pharmaceutical companies may have even known that this was just a very lucrative, lucrative flash in the pan and not a lasting protective effect. Really think about that for one second. What this Swiss study, which is based on Israeli data, is saying, I mean, this, this last part there is, that's pretty inflammatory. What they're saying is they did these trials for such a short period of time that it's very possible that Pfizer and the other companies knew that they didn't know what was gonna happen after this short test period, that eventually you'd need more and more boosters. And why would they want that? Do you think, and again, <laughs> I'm not an economist or a mathematician or a scientician, but do you think it's possible that these vaccine companies that are making a ton of money right now, ton of money, billions and billions and billions of dollars, that they might've been like, oh, you know, let's just test this short term, it'll kind of look good. And then when it doesn't look good, or if it starts petering out, which is exactly what's happening right now, oh, we'll start doing booster shots. How about a monthly subscription, right? Everybody loves subscription these days. You just put your credit card in once, you don't have to think about it. Uh, how about a monthly subscription to Pfizer or a monthly, a monthly subscription to Johnson & Johnson or whatever else it is? So what do you do with that information? What do you do with that information? They tell you one thing a month ago, they completely flip on it. We just showed you a year and a half worth of Fauci flipping. I personally, once again, would say that if you wanna get vaccinated, you should get vaccinated. I would also say that eating right and doing exercise and probably getting a little bit of sun and you know trying to be around relatively healthy people and if you wanna wear a mask, that's fine and all that stuff. Maybe it has a little something to do with uh, personal responsibility. And I would also say, I tweeted this out this morning, I am far more concerned about the mind virus going around right now than I am about the COVID virus. And that's not to diminish any of the realities around COVID, but the mind virus that somehow these government officials care about us, that these scientists who flip and flop care about us, that the people who lock us in our houses and demand we wear masks and don't care that people are out of work and depressed and you know, rates of alcoholism are going through the roof and, and suicide in young people and all of those things, perhaps they aren't the ones that really care about us. Do you think the ones who keep you in your house and keep you out of work really care about us? On top of the fact that for a bunch of people who are really concerned about health, they don't seem to mind that the president has old person syndrome. I'm starting to see a trend here. Uh, all right, let's move on to the third story. I'll do this one a little briefly. Uh, the border, I haven't done much on the border, as I mentioned at the top, because there's just been so much going on, but we do have an absolute border crisis. Now let's remember, when Donald Trump was president, there was a border crisis and Trump was putting kids in cages and it was very evil, all of the things that were happening and it was racist and if you believed in a border, uh, you're a racist and a bigot, most likely a Nazi, all of that good stuff. Uh, then Biden starts putting kids in cages. AOC doesn't go to the border to you know, have her little photo shoot. Kamala Harris, it took her months to get down there and she only went because Trump went down. We see kids literally in cages. You've all seen the images and they've got the, that uh, sort of metallic wrapping on them. And we're told that we have to socially distance and wear a mask, but then they've got cages that are, that are over packed by about 800% in some cases. Kids on top of each other, nobody's wearing masks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, well, now there is just an extraordinary amount of people just literally walking through the border. We've got some video on it, but first, quote from The Blaze, catch and release is alive and well under the Biden administration as 50,000 migrants who crossed into the southern border illegally have been released into the U.S. without a court date. Though migrants are told to report to an ICE officer after they are released from detention, only 13 
2019 have done so, Axios reported on Tuesday. The report comes as record numbers of migrants are seeking illegal entry into the United States. Southwest land border encounters have been steadily increasing since President Joe Biden assumed office in January, with 188,000 encounters reported in June, the highest number in decades. Now, this is really incredible stuff. So about 50,000 people have just basically wandered into the United States and been told, hey, could you check in with the nice guy? Uh, maybe next week, you know? Go say hi to your friends and family, get settled, and could you do that? Would you, would you mind? And you're not gonna believe it, guys. A whole bunch of them, most of them, are not doing that. Now, let's put aside borders for a second. Let's just jump back to the COVID situation. If we are to believe that this is the thing killing everybody and grandma is dead and everyone she knows is dead and children and everything and we've got to shut down everything, do you think that we should be just letting people wander in from other countries into the, into the country right now? Even if you're the most open border lefty nutbag, do you think that right now relative to the pandemic, do you think that perhaps this wouldn't be the time for that? Uh, but yes, they are literally just wandering in with mask and without and often with no social distancing. Uh, and we've got some video here. This is former ICE director. Uh, and he is not, this is the former ICE director. He is not happy with Joe Biden uh, right now. This is some, from Fox News. Take a look. Northern border uh, we have with Canada is still closed because of COVID. And the southern border is wide open. And you're right. I mean, ICE has already had 7,500 positive COVID cases run through their system. Right now, as we're speaking, they have nearly 1,200 active cases in custody right now that came across that border. So, and what really scares me is that nearly 300,000 gotaways this year, those who escaped border apprehension, how many of them had COVID? And, and we already know the U.S. government, on purpose, has released hundreds of COVID-positive people into the interior by either buying them a bus ticket or a plane ticket and releasing them into the interior of the United States. This is, this is simply incompetence at the highest level. At the same time, they're talking about Americans masking up, they're talking about door-to-door -door vaccinations, the U.S. citizens being held accountable to COVID, but the southwest border is wide open. Okay, so Tom Homan, that is the former director of ICE, okay? And he is saying some incredibly damaging stuff right now. Now, not only do we have 1,200 people right now that are migrants trying to walk in who have COVID. So how many, you know, weren't we worried? Remember a couple months back, we were very worried about COVID in prison. So what did we have to do? We had to open up the prisons, right? That was one of the many pr brilliant progressive policies. So that means we have 12,000 people in the system at the southern border right now who have COVID. How many people have they spread it to? Do we know about that? Uh, but then he's telling us, we know we have COVID positive patients that are being put on buses and planes and sent throughout the country. Again, forget the border thing, right? Because I, I guess if you talk about the border, you're automatically a racist. Personally, at this point, I would almost be for shutting down the borders altogether. If there was ever a time to do it and be like, guys, we have some internal stuff we have to deal with. Nobody can come over today. You know, like when you're a kid and you want your friend to come over, mom and dad are fighting. It's like, no, not today. Like we got to deal with some family stuff today and maybe you can come over and, you know, play Sega Genesis tomorrow, something like that. Uh, this is the idiotic situation we're being put in. The same people who want open borders are the same people who are telling us we have to shut down the economy and they're the same people who want people who have COVID who are often walking into this country, not even from the country that they're walking in from, right? Because they're usually Haitian refugees and a whole bunch of other stuff uh, and other South American countries. Um, and they don't have masks on. Don't believe me? Here's some video. I don't mean to be a dick. I don't mean to be a racist white supremacist, but how about we just say to those people, hey guys, sorry, not today. Uh, you're not social distancing, okay? A lot of you aren't wearing masks. We got some stuff we need to deal with and uh, you can't come in today, but that's not what we're doing. We're basically letting these people walk in and then as the former ICE director said, we're busing them all over the place. This is an extraordinary stat, how about this? Uh, they've offered almost everyone that comes in to the country, these people, they've offered them vaccines over 30% have refused the vaccine. That's from Axios. 
Now, again, if we're to believe that this pandemic is gonna cause the collapse of Western society, then what should we do with those people? Shouldn't we say, okay, sorry, at the very minimum, we'll figure out your refugee status and if you're under threat and everything else, and I get it, you wanna to come to America, and I know that half the country you know, believes that America is an evil racist place and there's an awful lot of brown skinned people over there trying to come to America, they must be very confused. Um, but you know, the very minimum requirement is you have to take the vaccine. And 30% of them are saying no and we don't do anything about it. You get it, you get it. Uh, guys, part two of my interview with Congressman Jim Jordan. It's all about big tech. It's about government dysfunction. It's about this January 6th insurrection hearing, which Nancy Pelosi, by the way, stopped Jim Jordan from being on the commission. Uh, because she, she only wants people that are hysterically crying, apparently. Uh, so part two of my interview with Jim Jordan is up right now. Part one of my interview with uh, the fastest talking Jew on the internet, Ben Shapiro, is up. The full episodes of both of those are up right now at rubenport.locals.com and it's absolutely ad-free and early. And uh, this Friday is the big day. I'm gonna be doing a two hour, at least a two hour, maybe more, at least a two hour live extravaganza as I prepare to go off the grid. We will be announcing my new book, which I, I'm just so psyched uh, to show you the cover and the pre-sale will begin that day. If you are a member of our Ruben Report community at rubenreport.locals.com, you can get a signed and numbered copy. Every single member of our Locals community, if you buy it that day, you will get the signed and numbered copy. And then if you are not a member, if you buy it on day one, uh, you can get a signed copy, but it will not be numbered, and if I have to sign 10,000 uh, books before going off the grid, I will gladly sign 10,000 books. That would be absolutely my pleasure. Uh, so that's what I'm doing on Friday, and then we've got a big announcement related to locals, maybe some other things, there's a few things cracking right now, and then I disappear for a month, and uh, good luck to you. So, okay, see you tomorrow.